Welcome to Crashing with Friends Podcast. I'm your host today, Jackson Brayman. Over on the far corner there, we got David Lindsay. Yo. In the middle, Connor Hobbs. What's up, what's up? And the man to my right, Kyle Hobbs. And I'm say. <laughs> how's, your week, how's your week going, guys? You guys doing good? Pretty yeah. good. How's yeah, your nice. week going, Jack? Yeah. It's going pretty good. Uh, if you like the podcast, remember to uh, like and subscribe. Um, if you don't like it, uh, like and subscribe too. And we'll see know. you next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. Kyle, how's your week going? Uh, my week's going pretty good, man. It's a lot like it was last week. I'm, I've listened to that new used album like way more times than I'd listened to it the previous week. I think I've listened to it sometime, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 times now at this point. Yeah, the I used? gave it a full listen to it today. Yeah, it, it I gets listened. better, right? It gets better and better, right? Yeah. Surprisingly. Like, so yeah, every time the first time I listened to it, I was like lukewarm on it, and then the second time I listened to it, it, it just yeah, like you said, it just kept getting building and building. Now it's up there for me as like one of their best albums. Oh yeah, I, I like think, so. dude. I like every song on the album. I man, I can't get enough of it. Dude. I didn't even know there was a new used album, dude. I just added it to my playlist. It, it just came oh, out like really good. Uh, it came out in May. Okay, May yeah, at the end of May, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's. That's been a lot of my time is listening to that album like on repeat over and over. It's, it's been a long time since I've had an album that I've actually listened to this much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like um, that new um, Tiger Cub album, I listened to that a ton. Um, that was a good album. That new Polyphia album, uh, Remember That You'll Die, I listened to that a ton, but nothing compared to this, dude. Like, it's crazy. See, it's got I'm, a mass appeal. See, I've been digging that Tiger Cub album a bit more than... This used album. That granted, I've only listened to the used album once, and I listened to it today, and I was like, I dig it. There were some songs I didn't jive with, but you know, maybe the more I listen to it, the more I'll get into it. Because that's how I was with, uh, what was it, P five or or P four, which whichever one, Hail Stan. Yeah, four. Yeah, P four. <laughs> At first, I didn't really like that album, but. The more I listened to it, the more it grew on me. And now, like, I pretty much like every single song on that album, with the exception of one of them. But, yeah. So, I'll, I'll keep listening to it. I'll keep listening to it. But that Tiger Cub album is pretty dope. It is, man. That mm-hmm. other album that you recommended to me, uh, what was it? Psycho? Uh, yeah, Frame, right? Psycho, Psycho, frame? Psycho Frame? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was Psycho Frame. Yeah, yeah I checked <laughs> them out. They were pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I dug them, too. <laughs> Yeah, um, I also have been watching <clears throat> this new show called Mrs. Davis. It is one of the coolest shows that I've seen in a long time. Um, it's made by the guy who made Lost. His name is David Damon Lindelof. Mm. It's, he also made uh, The Leftovers, which if you've not seen The Leftovers, it, it is fantastic. It has a good ending. I've See, only seen the first season. i got to watch the other seasons. Right. It ends, it ends really good, but it's... He didn't stick the landing on Lost, and because of that, it's almost like he is determined to stick the landing on every other show he's made. And from what I've heard, this show is a one season. Oh, he also made the that new Watchmen show on HBO Max, which if you haven't seen that as Ooh. well, the which one? The that, Watchmen. That Watchmen oh, show yeah, on HBO yeah. Max. Oh, I'm about God. to start that actually. It's so good, oh, my, dude. Yeah. If you like Watchmen as much as I did, like. Especially the comic book version of Watchmen. Yeah. It continues that storyline. Yeah, like all the little loose ends that you don't see much of in the comic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't recommend it's that enough. But uh, it's the same guy who made all of those shows. But uh, this one, pretty much there's an AI that everybody, it's like an earbud and everybody has it in their ear. And essentially that person is walking you through life pretty much helping you through everything you're doing and this one person named simone she is resistant to this she's like i'm not gonna put, i'm not gonna put this thing in my ear i'm not gonna talk to it and because of that like all these people are like watching her throughout the world and they're all the the ai is talking through them pretty much and it's like she wants to talk to you and like everybody's looking at her as she's walking by and stuff like that and That's uh, weird. it's pretty cool and then eventually she can, she's like, okay, I'll, I'll talk to it, and she goes and talks to her, and this is all in the first episode. It's not really that much of a spoiler, but 
she goes and talks to it, and the the, the AI is like pretty much find the holy grail for me, like, and that's really all I'm gonna say. Like, it's that that's all it took for me to watch it. I was like, okay, that's a cool premise. This AI wants you to find the holy grail. What the fuck's up with it? You know, that's pretty dope. It is pretty cool, man. I can't recommend it enough. Um, so far, everything that's happened in the show, she's also hunting magicians. <laughs> Which is fucking weird. <laughs> what? Magicians. Now, now it's a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me guy, in the, guy in the corner like pulls a rabbit out of the hat. She fucking tackles him to the ground. <laughs> so far, I have not been able to predict a single thing that's happening. Every single bit of the show is like, what the fuck? Like, in that first episode alone, I had like four or five of those moments. Like, holy shit, I can't believe what the fuck. Like, it's it's so good, man. I can't is remember. It, is it only on Peacock? It's really? only on Peacock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got. Right. Yeah, I've and got how much is Peacock a month? Nope. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it. Um, Same. I don't know. I don't know how much it is either. But I just keep paying for it. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's only like what four ninety five or something. I think it's cheap. I want to say. Right. Yeah. And they, I mean, they got Battlestar Galactica on there too, so that's enough reason to get it. Hell yeah. But uh, on top of that, um, I did. I went to the, the public swimming pool and um, I normally don't go there because of all the pee in the water, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, I like to have pee in my pants. I'm, 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 I've got my pee pants on right now. I remember the basketball court. <laughs> I'm Dude, still wearing my pee pants. I'm not going to lie. I think like almost every single time I've gotten into a pool, I've like just straight up pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, almost every single time I've gotten into a pool, I was just like, Dude, it's, I'm not getting out to go pee. Oh my it's God, sterile God. and he likes the taste. Sometimes I'll do it within like four feet from someone. <laughs> oh my God. To me, it's, that's like ultimate relaxation, you know? It's like just hanging out, chilling, and just like letting go. Like, am I doing it right, Stan? <laughs> you seem like a special pee. dude at the creek. Absolutely, just like let all those yeah. par- micro just, parasites just go it. up upstream from a few little kids that are playing and splashing around. And <laughs> is that what you do, Jackson? <laughs> anyway, well, that's not what I did in the pool. That's not what you did. No, I, I'd never be in the pool. It's freaking uh, disgusting. I, well, but join, uh, join us, man. It's, it's free over here. All right, man. So, like, right as right as we're about to leave, um, I was on the high dive. And my son, I was doing some front flips, and my son's like, "Hey, dad, dad go on the high dive, do a front flip." And I, <laughs> <laughs> I can only do like front flip one eighties. I can't do regular front flips for some reason. It's, it's, it's oh. I was talking to Connor about it. It's the tucking motion because I, I plug my nose because I don't want the water up my nose. I'm, I'm a man. I can do what I want. So I plug my nose, and because of that, I tuck. You know what I'm saying? It makes me do that instant three six like one eighty. Yeah, dude, I've got a big nose, man. Like anytime I do any kind of thing into the water, I'm getting a bunch of. Right, I don't want that stuff. In, I don't want that stuff in my sinuses. You just man. have to blow P-P. out your nose when you hit the water. It's yeah, easy. Yeah, I Connor do. knows, <laughs> dude. I can do that when I dive, but when I'm hitting the water just with my body, I can't. I can't I, you I, can I, still do it. <laughs> the same thing works. It works you the same. Think, you don't think <laughs> I remember uh, seeing Kyle. Intuitive dude. to me. You jump don't into think the water I feel like I need to be holding my breath, <laughs> not taking I've tried. I've tried that so many times. You got to make fun of me at the swimming pool. I have this mental image of. Kyle jumping in the water and doing a 180 and like one arm is up in the air and the other one is holding his nose. That sounds about right, dude. I'm still oh, rocking that pose. I could 100% be one of those pussies that just has the nose clip on. Dude. I was that pussy, dude. Every time I went to the pool, I'd have one of those nose clips on because I wanted to have fun, but I didn't want water in my nose. But uh, so as I'm doing the front flip 180, dude, I realized like, oh, dude, I fucked up. And I, like, I looked at the sky and I had that freeze frame moment, you know, and like time stands still for a second. And I realized like I'm about to destroy my back, throw my both my arms, my legs and like and not and then, plug your nose somehow. Oh, dude. Yeah, as you trust me, the, the nose thing stopped whenever I realized I was about to die. Yeah, and then it was like the song went through my head, like "Hello, darkness, my old friend." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. And then, like, once I hit, I hit so fucking hard, dude. Oh, <laughs> made the sound of a gunshot. <laughs> yeah, dude, my left butt cheek. Um, 
my left hip and parts of my back on the right side and both my arms still hurt, dude. Damn. Like, I hit so hard. <sighs> dude, I played it off like, a, like I didn't do shit, though, man, but... Do you like sitting there like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that cool, son? <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> and he gets over there like, well, that's not my dad. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> dad? Uh, <laughs> but that's that's been my week, dude. Nice. Yeah, nice. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Hell yeah. yeah. Gang, gang. Yep. Connor, how's your week going? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, really good week. More battle bots. No surprise there. Um, yeah, watched most of Fast 10. I need to finish it. But so far, I thought it was pretty good. Although I think they always give Michelle Rodriguez like the worst lines. So bad. Gosh. When she says, game recognizes game to some chick, I'm like, fuck this. And, you know, <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, dude, fuck this shit. Uh but yeah, I hope to finish it this weekend and give you my full opinions next week. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> there were so many times where I almost stopped it. Because yeah. I was like, this is insane. The 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 acting that's happening right now mm-hmm. versus what is happening in the, in the movie. Oh, man. I didn't, the, I didn't understand why that bomb was on fire and rolling down the street. Like I, did, I didn't understand why <laughs> Dom had to put out the fire on the bomb. And then they, the bomb still explodes. And like, oh, I'm like, what the fuck is happening with this shit? You know, like, <laughs> this thing was on fire. Like, it was like, completely engulfed. Like, how, I don't did, know. how did none of these houses stop that bomb? <laughs> That's not how stuff works. It's just going you know? <laughs> to gonna get snagged on something. There's right. going to be at least one car that's not somehow miraculously not parked on the street. That's the whole thing that kept getting me. I was like, where are all the cars that are supposed to be parked on the street and stuff? Right. Like, empty ass roads and shit. And then Dom makes one of those like, like high level algebra geometry, like calculations with his car and saves the day <laughs> with it. It's like, how the fuck did he do that? Just action maxes it. Just yeah. He shoots his car <laughs> a certain direction and it like hits a crane and boom, like there you go. It's like the scene in whichever one where he, ha- he has that bomb on the bottom of his car and attaches it to something else, like the flips helicopter? his car. I think it's yeah, the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Fast the Seven. What are we doing yeah. here? It was, yeah, that's the Fast you, and Furious franchise. You got to finish it, Connor. You got to. Yeah, I, I remember when it was all about street racing. Oh, come on, <laughs> it was Jackson. never about street racing, <laughs> man. It's so played out. It was, it, was, it was literally just about street racing and stealing DVD and family oh my God. <laughs> DVD players. You sound like an old man. Everybody says that. <laughs> I remember when Final Fantasy was turn based. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, new season of Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Yeah. Episode one was pretty good. It's out. Yeah, it's out. Oh, baby. Holla at your boy. Yeah. Coming Is there only you. one other season of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm gonna. I, I've been seeing the trailers. I think I'm gonna hop on that pretty soon. Ooh, yeah. It's really good. A war yeah. is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Wars are brewing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got a lot of a lot of hope for this next season. Um, but yeah, check it out. Paramount Plus. You can also go there and find Beavis and Butthead season two. Most of it's out. You can yeah. also find Master Chief's naked ass. <laughs> yeah. Slap it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Slap it all day. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing was uh, the used uh, album that Kyle talked about. I was also hiding my enthusiasm for it because I didn't <laughs> want anyone else to find out. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I'm going to go through a few thoughts on it, <clears throat> if you don't mind. So I think that there's like a lot of um, like influences in this album that you can really hear in certain songs. So like uh, Worst I've Ever Been and numb i get like some lincoln park vibes out of some of that stuff that's going on in those songs like really hardcore and then i hate everybody man it is like one for one a 21 pilot song like not even joking Mm. all the sounds and all the noises that they use same exact noises in a 21 pilot song even like the beginning it starts out the same Interesting. I'm like, dude. whoa i didn't even put that together but yeah i can definitely hear that yeah so like and then, like, you get songs like Headspace, Cherry. They sound very much like traditional used songs in a lot of ways. And then you get, you know, towards the end of the album, and it's more 
traditional use, but also you still get a lot of Lincoln Park in there and a lot of 21 Pilots. But yeah, I want to say uh, Giving Up is probably my favorite song on the album. And then um, probably worst I've ever been, that first song is number two, and then three is Numb. And then Dancing with the Brick Wall is surprisingly really good. Also, Top of the World. I thought, thought was, Top of the World is really good. Uh, like Headspace. It's like Headspace, yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I like Headspace. Headspace was one that grew on me. It didn't really, uh, I don't know. I didn't really like it at first, but then, yeah, the more you listen to it, like the whole album is like that, where the more you listen to it, the more you're like, oh, this is actually really, really good. Mm-hmm. And like you know? what he's doing with his lyrics is yeah, phenomenal. It's like, like, like you get all the levels, like musically, lyrically, and just overall composition of the album. It's like it hits on every single point. And like it's only 30 minutes long for 11 songs. And several of the songs, I'm like, dude, this is like, I could swear a movie song. Like, you know how, like, they put uh, Pretty Handsome Awkward in that Transformers song? Mm, yeah, my yeah that was great. <laughs> 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 no? I, I, my, I'm with you, dude. I love yeah. that song. Okay. So, in my opinion, I'm like, I'm more on the, I don't really like that song as much. And also, Transformers movies kind of suck. So, it was like. But that first one, bro. But the first one is good. But. F- first one is watchable. I'll put it that way. And, and Beast yeah. Wars is going to be good, too. <laughs> sure, man. Sure. Right on. Sure. I'll wait for home video on that one. Robot Gorillas. <laughs> Did your thought, Connor? Uh, but yeah, just uh, a lot of these songs, I'm, I'm over here listening to them like, oh, I could definitely feel this in like a horror movie vibe or like I could, uh, uh, I hate everybody. I was always getting like this vibe of, Oh, I could see them introducing uh, Jason Momo in the Fast Eleven with this song, you know, something like that. It's like it's that kind of vibe where I'm like, oh, this could, this could blow up in a way that a lot of the used albums haven't blown up. Like New Fall Out Boy blew up. Did it? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> well, I mean, they were in like Big Hero Six and stuff movies. Oh, okay, yeah. I think bigger than that. Which actually, I don't like any of the New Fall Out Boy, but that song fit in really well in that movie. Sure Just throwing did. that out there. Yeah. Baymax is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Funny you say Fall Out Boy, David. I've been listening to so much old Fall Out Boy. Yeah, me too. Um, recently, for some fucking reason. <clears throat> but, uh, old Fall Out Boy is good, but. Yeah, it's great. Right. Yeah. But uh, you remember that uh, one time you were talking about lyrics that we didn't know what the fuck they were talking about? Oh, yeah. They were, and you, you said, uh, what was it? Uh, Weebo? Dude, I don't <laughs> remember. <laughs> Are you, have That's you ever me. been a Weebo or a. <laughs> That was me. That was, I think it was Connor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been a wi- a widow? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, wait. Someone, wait. Someone said we both. That was would, Connor. You, would you rather be a widow or a divorcee? Yes. That was always saying. Would you rather be a Weebo? And like, what the fuck is a Weebo? <laughs> a Weebo. <laughs> yeah, I heard that song yesterday, and I was just I was driving, and I almost fucking wrecked because I was laughing so hard. That a was Weebo. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to their first album, like. Like all the way back and forth to Colorado, mm. old Fall Out Boy. Yeah, stuff. that from from under the cork tree album is banging. And then yeah. there's that other. I one always get that dance dance on, but yeah, the the yeah. blue that blue album cover with Saturday and all that shit on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Infinity on High is good too. Yeah, that's the album I'm talking about. Is that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a cover song that they did for the Tony Hawk Pro, or not, no, Tony Hawk American Wasteland, but I can't mm. remember what it was, but I really dig that song. Mm. There was like a, they had like a whole bunch of covers on right. it, but yeah. But yeah, I'm giving this, uh, the used album, Toxic Positivity, my seal of approval, 10 out of 10, must damn. listen for the year. Probably going to be my album of the year. Yep. Hot uh, Damn. Probably gonna be my album of the year. Yeah, as well. it's, yeah it's gonna be hard to dethrone this yep. one. So. I was our, I was yeah. telling Jackson that last night. Yeah. Wow. I haven't liked an album this much like throughout the whole thing since like Drift from Era. Like, oh, dude, yeah. And the like I said, the only song that I don't really like as much as the rest is like Dopamine, which it's like an okay song. Like it's not a bad song. It's just not. It's like whatever, but all the other songs are bangers, in my opinion. And the album's so short, you just get through it, and you're like, "Well, that was great," but I'm gonna keep going. You yeah. know, it's like <clears throat> thirty minutes, man. Like it's not long at all. The album's only thirty minutes. Yeah, weird. And Eleven songs too. That's why I've listened it's to crazy. it so many times. I just play it on repeat at work, and it's like, God, I think I've listened to it. Like, and then I'll, I won't even realize how many times I've listened to it. It's just like, damn. Mm-hmm. 
It's easy to get through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's my week. <laughs> David, how's it going, man? How's your week? Uh, good. <laughs> nice. Uh, I guess just rolling into the music thing, Knocked Loose has two new singles out. Have you listened to them? I have. Have you seen the music video for them? I have. It's yeah. dope. <laughs> <laughs> it is great. Uh, I'm not really like that in love with the guitar tone that they did for these singles. Cause yeah, it's a little off. You could tell that they're using the Kemper or whatever mm -hmm. and not actual amps. The um, the first song is not, what is it, Deep in the Willow? Yeah. I, I like Everything is Quiet Now. Like That's actually one of my favorite Knock Loose songs right now. Deep in the Willow is kind of whatever for me. But um, anyway, I also beat Miles Morales. Ooh. Since last we spoke, nice. And I, I actually both. think I like the story beats more yep. than, I, than the original. Mm -hmm. um, it was short though. I remember like just swinging through and hitting that wall where it's like, "Hey, you can't come back from here." And I'm like, "Really? Already?" Like it's a short one. Yeah, I could have used two or three more story missions. But um, what were you gonna say, Jackson? I was I was just gonna say I bought both of them in the epic sale. Yeah, so. I heard that on the last show. Yeah, I was I was wondering if you hadn't. Cracked I, him open yet? I haven't started uh, Spider-Man yet. I've already beat Spider-Man, but I'm just going to play Spider-Man, then Miles Morales. Oh, okay. So also, huh? Oh, nothing. Oh, I was going to say, <clears> I, <throat> I did pick up this game off, off PlayStation Plus called The Messenger that I've been wanting to try out for a while. Have you guys heard of that game? Mm -hmm. I've heard of it, yeah. Dude, it is so fucking good, man. Like, it... I don't know if you know anything about it, but basically it's like a retro NES-style platformer ninja game, kind of like Ninja Gaiden. But when you think you beat the game you are transported 500 years into the future and all the music and graphics change to SNES style graphics. Uh -huh. And then when you get to a certain point, you can start shifting between NES and SNES and it becomes like a, a Castlevania Metroid style thing where you're running around hunting for items to do different shit. Dude, it's so cool. Wow. Nice. It's also, so you're also traveling between past and future. Yeah. Yeah. It's also insanely hard. I think I almost lost a PS five controller to it, man. <laughs> that was that close, Damn. bro. Like, yeah, back in the day, like Donkey Kong Country Two style frustration. Uh, and then I did, I did, uh, I haven't played through all of it, but the Final Fantasy Sixteen demo is so good. Oh, I forgot oh, that. I'm gonna be playing it this weekend. Oh my god, bro! It's everything you imagine it would be, dude. It's and more. Like the first, I played like an hour of it, and and like I would say at least thirty minutes to forty five minutes of it is cutscenes, which, I mean. I don't care. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I don't care. Uh, to be honest, those are always my favorite parts when I was a kid was all the FMV yeah. cutscenes. Like, it is them. weird. Like, I put it on frame rate mode, so it's at 60, but the cutscenes are in 30, and so it's kind of like pulling me in and out of 30, but the cutscenes look stewed. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't wait. I already have it downloaded, so. Yeah. Um, I did go to Colorado for a week. That was nice. fun. Um, we were up in the mountains, like on the western side. If anyone knows where, like, Telluride or any, anything like that is, we were... Not in Telluride, but about an hour and a half northwest of there in, like, this mountain valley. Because Mandy's uh, grandpa passed away, and so we were doing, like, a celebration thing for him. And um, But, yeah, it was it was pretty chill, dude. It was nice, clean air up there. I think we were at, like, 7,500 feet the whole time we were there. Rad. I went for a couple runs, dude, and my lungs were just, uh Not having it. I didn't like it, yeah. Um, but then Eden, we went to her... Uh, Closing ceremonies for softball last night, and their team got second in the league. So nice, pretty proud of her. Yeah, is she yeah, excited? I mean, she. I think she's more excited to just be there with her friends, you know. Yeah. And she did do. Uh, she did do really good this season. I was. I was. I was. I say I'm shocked, but it's not to sound mean. Like basketball season, she was like just not great, and she didn't really care. But I drug her out to the batting cages for an hour, like, two or three times a week just to get her swing down because none of the girls swing at that age. They just sit there because it's like ball, 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 ball. I'm like, no, I want her to hit anything, anywhere it goes. <laughs> like, I don't care because hits matter. So, yeah. They do. Super proud of her. Shout out. out. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, you, Jack? Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh Listen to that new The Used album. <laughs> oh my god. Did you? <laughs> We're not doing this again. Give me your in-depth thoughts. We're not doing this. It was... It, it was fantastic. I gotta tell you. 
Um, nah, like, I enjoyed it. Um, I just need to listen to it more. We've already talked about it, really. Uh, listen to that one album that you were telling me about before. Mm. I was really digging that. Uh, New Knocked Loose is really freaking dope. Oh, I did listen to Rot Nest. Nice. You listened to the whole thing? Really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude, really right good. now that's my album of the year. It's it's something something's weird about it that keeps pulling me back in, bro. I can't I can't describe it. <laughs> it's just it's just so fucking heavy, man, yeah. and brutal. And like you know, and nasty really, sometimes, you know, <laughs> like a little sludgy and yeah, weird. That the song uh, Hell at the yeah. end of the song. Like they just came out with a music video for it. Oh sweet. And it, it like starts out with like a really weird, like almost kind of like a preacher type quote or like a jo- or what's that? What's the dude uh, that of Jonestown? Jim Jones. Almost mm, kind of like yeah. a Jim Jones type quote right before it kicks oh, into the weird. song. And I'm, I'm like, like, dude, put that this on is so heavy. Here. And everyone's dressed like fucking Scarecrow from uh, Batman Begins for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, that's in the Torrent music video too. Do they just always dress like that? Yeah. Like for their okay. Ever since like their first music video, that's like how that dude is just always dressed. I think it's it used to be just one dude. I think. Mm. And he was like, friggin', I can make a band out of this. That's how Periphery started. It's just one dude. The entire first album is literally just all Misha Mansour for the most part. What? Yep. Mm-hmm. Dude, I had no idea. But like, that's, they say that, like, Spencer's, like, I don't know, vocals <laughs> or whatever, like, always sound weird on that album because it was always meant to be an instrumental album and not an album with vocals on it. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But, I don't know. P two is still my favorite album, even though it's like yeah. to them it's their most hated album because of just how of a grueling process they went through to make it. It's a masterpiece, dude. It really is. Like, it will it's always great. stand the test of time. It will always be one of my favorite albums ever made. Like Same. for sure. We're talking P two. We're talking yes. P two. God, that album's so good, man. Yeah. That and drift. As well, oh, yeah. yeah anyway, I'm a sucker for like any kind of album that will have like repeated lyrics or repeated, um, like guitar riffs. Mm-hmm. Like Coheed and Cambria does that a lot, but yep, yeah, I love love it when Periphery does it because like in P2 they did that somewhere in time. They welcome in the fall. Uh, P3 it was the Misery album. <laughs> 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 I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's the album where he just says, fucking misery. Yep. He says it like yeah. so many times. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, playing like a lot of chess ultra on PC, playing against people, trying to improve my rank on there. I'm still at Apprentice, but freaking chess is tough, man. When you mm. haven't been playing and practicing it like for a while, like it's tough. I always people just hit move you random moves. pieces around, you know? Like, hopefully this will do something. I fall, I fall into traps like crazy. I'm trying to not fall into traps now, so that's my thing. Don't fall into traps. Yeah. That's a big life lesson for everything. Don't fall into traps. You're in the jungle. Look out for traps. Yeah. I've uh, been playing a lot more of a Tears of... Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, beat the Fire Temple. Uh, ah, man. Trying to think what else I've done on there. I don't know how many more, uh, whatever you call it, shrines. I'm not. I'm not sure how many more of those I've got, but probably a lot. <laughs> probably a lot. There's 152 shrines. Yeah, I actually started finally officially playing that. Um, it just made it down to the desert, and I'm trying to find my way through the shroud to get to Gerudo Town. Pretty much, that's all I've done. I, I mean, of course. Like ten hours of shit along the way, but <laughs> so that's the first one you're doing. Screw it up. Yeah, because I I started doing the dragon tears thing too, the geoglyphs, and I saw where they were on the map and was like, well, I guess I'll just start at the bottom left and just work my way all the way around. Because last in Breath of the Wild, I started in the Zora place and then went left. Yeah. So I think backwards. the best way to do it in this game is to start with the Rito and then go clockwise. That's what I was going to do because at one point somebody was like, I think somebody saw Zelda up there in the Hebra Mountains. And so I was just going to do both of those quests. So like, uh, if you go towards the Rito, it's like um, you get a really useful uh, sage that allows you to fly farther. But like yeah. uh, the main thing is uh, there's a stable up there where you talk. It's like... <laughs> 
it's not a stable. It's like a uh, it's a post. It's like a newspaper that they they changed into new into a newspaper. Okay. Um. So you accept a side quest there, and every stable you go to has a side quest for that newspaper. Oh. And okay. also by doing that, you unlock this like frog armor that will allow you to stick to walls in rainy situations. That's sick. Yeah. The the desert sucks anyway, so I'll just do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the that that. Definitely go, yeah. Uh, Rito, and then what are the Goron, and then Zora, Zora, and then Gerudo. Okay, right on. Yeah, that'll work. I mean, I don't really care. I just thought it was practical. So, anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I watched like the latest season of Hell's Kitchen. Oh, did you? But, yeah, like because like all the episodes were out, so I was like, was it Roll? Huh? Was it raw? <laughs> there was several times where it was raw, man. <laughs> <laughs> several times. Did but uh, the cool thing was, like, the guy that I wanted to win fucking won. So I was really stoked on that. Don't I just, ruin it. I'm, like, two episodes in. Okay. But uh, and then there's uh, oh, MasterChef sorry. that started. And I used to, like, like, I had, like, probably the same feeling that Connor had. I was like, shit's fake. Like, but I still, whenever I watch it, I still feel good for, like, whoever wins and stuff. <laughs> so even if it's fake, I'm like, ah, it's still chicken soup for the soul, I guess. Oh, I always love MasterChef, but, man. So, uh, so you, you're saying you like that <clears throat> that intro scene with them in the little cafe fake eating? You like that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but there's, there's, a lot of times, there's a lot of times where I'm watching that show, I'm like, this is fake as fuck. This is fake, but. Yeah. But still, I like Gordon uh, coming into that mo- that monster truck. I'm like, oh, no fucking dude, way. There's no fucking way he's driving that monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> Today is gonna be a monster of a day. He, he lands a plane, like <laughs> <laughs> double backflip with Travis Pastrana. Yeah. <laughs> he spells out food. This guy does a halo jump. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Today we're going to flip our burgers. We're going to flip them, <laughs> and we're going to live moss. <laughs> yep. Oh god, man! If that dude fucking showed up like randomly, it was like oh, today we're going to live moss. I'd be like, oh my fucking god! <laughs> Dave Navarro, I fucking love you. <laughs> oh, I get so, it. Like Hell's Kitchen wise, did it actually seem like it was legit or did it seem like they all just went back to do drama stuff in front of the camera because that's what they were supposed to do? It didn't really seem like there was that much drama going on this season as far as like people yelling and screaming. It definitely seemed more real. More real? Okay. It seemed more real. It might be okay. fake still, but they, it seemed more real. They heard real. Connor's criticism. So <laughs> as long as there's less of the whole like, it just, it was too obvious in my opinion. Yeah. Like, all the stuff that would happen in the past. It's like, man, yeah, you're like, obviously telling these people to go out to that area and do some drama before they go to bed so they have something to, like, put on the TV show, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, most yeah. definitely, for sure, especially on Hell's Kitchen. So, I don't know. As far as the cooking and stuff, I love the cooking. Can't get enough of it. Uh, you done with your week? Uh, yeah, sure. Fuck it. One I last can. thing. I, um, I got done with my aligner stuff to where now I just have to wear them at night, so... Oh, cool. Now I'm aligner free. Fully mm-hmm. aligned. What's up? Yeah. One, one last thing on my side of the fence. <laughs> Did anybody finish the SLS men's Chicago finals? We were there. You were, like, physically there? Yeah, we, yeah, were we, there. we, we went, went there. to it. What? It was pretty dope, wasn't it? Dude, shout out to Kelvin Hoffler, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was really rooting for a fucking... What's his game? Um, Desenzo? Yeah, Desenzo, same yeah. dude. I've been rooting for him for years now, right, man. Right, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, it was a good event. Yeah. yeah. I root for Chris Joslin every single time. Me too, mm-hmm. but right, if yeah, not yeah, him, yeah, Ryan, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. It was cool seeing Ryan Sheckler there. Oh, yeah. yeah it was. It was like, whoa, Ryan Sheckler's here? Going for big shit again. I love seeing and Ryan skate, man. I, for, I, I forget her name, but that one 13-year-old blonde girl that did the 50-50. Covell. Yeah, yeah, fifty fifty kickflip, kickflip, like that was a huge like everyone went. Fuck! She <laughs> had, yeah, she had the highest run score, and then she just didn't land any best trick attempts. Yep, it just goes to show yeah. you, man, that the girls are catching up. Yep, mm-hmm. yeah, they're getting there, and they're young too, so they got a lot of room to grow, man. Yeah, if they stick at it, you know, you never know. Skateboarding is a hard sport. Yeah, why didn't you come with us to Chicago, David? <laughs> man. I- <laughs> 
I was probably here. <laughs> waiting for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Just sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I had a question for you guys. Um, it, I had that moment, like I was telling you guys about the pool, and I had that freeze frame moment where I was just like, time stood still. Can you guys give me an example of a, a moment where time stood still for you? Yeah, it was that time whenever I was in that big, like, hey, avalanche. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it was the same thing where, like, you you fall back. So it's not really time is standing still. It's more like you're falling and it, things are getting farther away, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because normally when you, when you fall, things get closer to you. But this time when you fall backwards, things get farther away. You know, it's just mm. kind of weird that way. But it is kind of yeah. like a freeze frame because there is a moment where you realize that you're fucked. And that's kind of the freeze frame moment right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. There's like nothing you can do. Yeah. I remember watching that happen, dude. And like, because I was videotaping it. I don't know why the fuck I was taping it, but I was taping it. And like, as the as the avalanche started, I just remember thinking, fuck, my brother's going to die. And Kyle Burleson <laughs> was also in that avalanche. And then, because it was a big hay, like haystack. I don't know. What do you think it was? 15, 20 feet tall. Was that in the Bradford's Probably. barn? Yeah, that was in the Bradford's barn, the mm-hmm. one that burned down. I feel like it was taller than that. It was that. taller than that. Yeah, yeah, like maybe 30 or 40. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was pretty tall, man. Because you guys were at the top, and all of a sudden, it just started falling, dude. Like an a- yeah, like yeah. it was an avalanche. <laughs> yeah. And then the last thing you see is, like, your hand sticking out, and then Kyle's leg sticking out. <laughs> and, like, that was all that was left to you guys. And I was thinking, holy shit, my brother and my cousin are dead. <laughs> There's not fucking egg. <laughs> Kyle Burn just the ran fuck. left. And then, and then Kyle set it on fire to free them. And that, no. <laughs> Burn the footage. Burn the evidence. Wicker man. <laughs> not the bees. Next year's going to be some good corn. <laughs> For sure. I, I remember we were in Branson at my grandparents' like cabin that they had down there, and they had this like deck that was probably twenty five feet off the ground and on the back there was this like little tiny railing. It was like literally like maybe a one by six piece of wood, and it was rotten. And like everybody was like, "Yeah, don't lean on that, or you're gonna fall." And like the second day we were there, dude, we went out for coffee. And do you remember John Clausen? Of course, yeah. Dude g- walks out there and leans on the railing and just. Goes bye bye, and like I remember, <laughs> I was standing kind of close to him, and I saw his face, and that was like a freeze frame moment where he's he's gonna die because <laughs> because if you know anything about the Ozarks, especially around Tanikomo, it's just boulders, bro. Like, and that was all that was down there, and he <laughs> landed right in between two boulders on this soft grassy patch, and like tucked and rolled backward and landed on his feet. But like, oh, wow. as soon as I saw, I heard it break and saw him fall. He was just like. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> he did like the slow mo grabbing motion. Yeah. I'm familiar with that. And then he came upstairs all like, you know, high and mighty because he didn't hurt himself and then stubbed his toe on a chainsaw and like split his big toe open. <laughs> uh, damn, dude. <laughs> you think you'd walk a little more careful around the chainsaw? <laughs> damn. Anyway, you got one, Jack? Uh, yeah, when I was like maybe. Eight, eight years, eight or nine years old. I was just h- hanging out, playing in the backyard, and the neighbor's cat, like it was like a fucking mean cat, but <laughs> it, I was just running out in the backyard, and then randomly, this cat just jumped from a fucking tree and just <laughs> it landed right on my head. And I remember like, I remember running and then looking up to my right, and I just see this cat, and he's just. You know, he's doing that. I'm getting geared up. I'm about to launch, and he just fucking pounced on me and got right on my head. He was declawed, so it didn't hurt. Thank God. So I always wonder. Te- I always that wondered was like how he a got teddy bear up. jumped on you. I always wondered how he got up the tree because, like, like when I was younger, I was like, "Oh, cats climb trees," but when I got older. I was like, he was declawed. How do you get up a tree? <laughs> but, he was just jawing his way up the whole tree. <laughs> but yeah, he fucking just fucking just like, and so I got the just the I got the freeze frame moment of just seeing the cat just being farther away and just like getting closer. Was was it like you were his way down, or did he attack you? 
He was a dick, so I don't think he was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was attacking me. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, dude. I think he knew. <laughs> did you guys did immediately just start cuddling because it was so cute? No. No. It, it was it was a sneak attack and then a runaway type situation. Did he blot out the sun? <laughs> <laughs> did you see a big silhouette of a cat? Uh, nah, we, there was a shit ton of trees in my backyard, man. It was pretty uh, shaded throughout most of it. Holy shit, that was funny. We had a pretty dope ass backyard when I was. Was that younger. when you lived by Skateland? Yes. Yeah, that was a sweet house. Yeah, we had like a we had a tree house, and then we had two trampolines that were like up yeah. next to the each house other. Where Connor and I had to wash the egg yolk off our hands. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hey, so to settle that, were we trying to squeeze the eggs to get them to Dude, crack I, open? I was that know, it? Oh man, I think I remember you guys specifically saying we're gonna light it on fire. Yeah, but we're trying but to we're, figure we're out trying how to it... smear it on the glass in front of on the front door. Of what? Of Skateland. Because we were throwing eggs on the building, and then we were like, let's rub the egg on, on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what was wrong with let's us, man? <laughs> we were like 11 or something. Oh, God, we oh, must geez. have been like 13 or 14. Like It was before I moved to California. It was Maybe it was the summer I moved, so we would have been 12. But, dude. Yeah, it sounds about right. God, we were stupid. Yeah, we were mischievous. You guys were. I, I didn't. I didn't do that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I was a good kid. <laughs> Jackson, the good kid. Yeah. So I've got one freeze frame moment. So Connor remembers it vividly, but we, I was probably like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight, climbing my grandparents' tree in their front yard. I get to the very top of the tree, and I'm way too high up, and I'm way too big of a kid to be that high up in this tree. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm at the top of the tree where I can see everything. And I just remember the, hearing the snap sound and then me just falling, dude, from the top of this tree. And, like, it was one of those things where it I freeze frame, remember looking straight at Connor dead in the eyes mm-hmm. and going, get dad. Get dad, yeah. Oh, my God. And, like, and then it was, like, boom, 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 boom. I remember hitting all these tree limbs and just flipping and then... That was it. like Right. And then I woke up, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half later, watching an instinct concert live on, like, Disney Channel. In the hospital? Is that the one no, that... No, at home. Oh, my God. Is that the one that where it opened up with, like, them coming out as mummies or something? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I remember that shit. <laughs> we had that on DVR, or had it somehow, but I Actually, watched I it. Actually, I think that was Backstreet Boys, now that I'm thinking about it. I Backstreet Boys you, had the mummies. What? I, I don't fucking know, but uh, it was it's so long ago. God, I was like, I, I know, I, like I said, like eleven or twelve. I don't know. I don't know how old I was. Well, you're younger than that. It's probably like seven or eight. You think so, man? Yeah. I, man? I can't remember. Like it's been so long ago. But yeah, that was freaky. Yeah, scary, man. Uh, I'd like climb down the tree as fast <laughs> as I could without falling myself, because then it'd be like we're both fucked at that point. Connor's just like, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, I remember. Yeah, I had to climb down that tree super fast, and yeah, I got mom and dad. And so, how was I laying? Was I on there? Like, man, I, I could I couldn't really remember. I want to say you're like maybe on your face or something, like face <laughs> first or something. I don't know. Like, I don't remember seeing your face when I ran past you because it was like it was very in the moment. Like, get down the tree, run inside. <laughs> like, you know. Did you beat him down the tree or did he win? No, he won. Oh, okay. I yeah. for sure won. Dude. I was freaked out, man. Because, like, yeah, like you said, like, he was right above me. I was looking up at him and then just watched it just boom. Oh, my All God. the way down. I was like, oh, fuck. It's freaking carving down the tree, like, in Jurassic Park. Just he hitting every limb down. No, it was yeah. more like a Tarzan moment. I surfed all the tree limbs down. <laughs> And he landed on that last branch right, right in between his yeah. legs. <laughs> George of the Jungle style. <laughs> It was really cool when you were, like, serpentining the vines. Man. <laughs> right. It was really cool. Um, so for pretty much the rest of the podcast, we're going to be talking about video game type stuff and how you think the rest of our year is going to go as far as, like, video games and media, like movies, TV shows, stuff like that. I, I, so uh, let's start with, like, ETH, or pretty much Summer Game Fest. Who do you guys, first my first question, who do you guys think won... Summer Game Fest, like as far as who do you think had the best presentation that you saw? The consumer one. Mm, indeed. Because we're finally getting Xbox games. 
Yeah, yeah I think... I think... Uh, I don't know. I think I liked Sony's and Microsoft's probably equally. But I think just because of the... The way Microsoft came out, like, swinging pretty hard, finally, for the first time in forever, like, it, it felt more, it felt like it meant more, you know? They had a really good showing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I'm going to say Microsoft. I'm going to say Microsoft as well. Yeah, man, that Starfield showcase I just watched today. Mm-hmm. Oh, bro. It looks pretty yeah. good. So excited. So I traded my Series X in, like, I think I, I mentioned that a few weeks ago, but... Uh, when they announced that new series S one terabyte, it's like three fifty or three forty or something like that. So I think I'm gonna buy one of those when Starfield comes out. Nice. Either that, you or just wait until taxes and build a PC. Because build the PC costs bro. are down. I can get like a twenty series build for like seven hundred bucks right now. I so say. it's kind of crazy. If you get yeah. it for uh, the PC, it's like gonna be maxed out at thirty frames per second. Oh, yeah, it won't be locked. Hopefully. Um. And then I can play everything on PC Game Pass if I want. Fable and all that. Yep. And you got to think, Xbox is probably like a year away from announcing a new console. They have, like, they're... they're Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so. Especially with all their games coming coming out at 30 frames per second. Like, they have to be close to releasing something new. I don't know what was going on with Redfall, man. (laughs) They said 60 frames per second and then didn't deliver it. Yeah. So, let's talk about, uh, you guys each brought five games you thought were noteworthy, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So, let's talk about those games. So, who wants to go first? Let's talk about five games that we saw throughout Summer Game Fest that we thought were noteworthy or stuff we want to play throughout the rest of the year or the next coming year. I'll go ahead and start. And you can make fun of me as much as you want for it, but Skylines 2, dude. Skylines 2 looked freaking dope. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, you are one of those sim guys, aren't you? Like, like simulator. I, I like yeah. par- I like building stuff, building parks and stuff like that. Yeah, because I I was really into roller coaster tycoon, mm-hmm. like for a bit, like just building roller coasters and stuff. And then from there, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try out Jurassic World, or yeah, uh, yeah, gonna, yeah, whatever that game is called. Jurassic World Evolution. Evolution. That's it. So uh, I got really heavily into the first one, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play the second one as soon as it's on sale. And yeah, got yeah, really into the second one. Yeah, I'm just waiting for like a new type of part game or something like that that I can get really into. And Skylines looks like it's gonna be it. Yeah. Uh, for me, oh no, go ahead. For me, the first game that really caught my eye was uh, that new Prince of Persia game. Yeah, dude. Especially when they said it's gonna be a, like a Metroidvania. I was like, dude, yes, I need that for my Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. I need to be playing it right now. It it looks so cool. <clears throat> if you if anybody listens to the podcast, you know I like I love Prince of Persia. Um I I it just looks it looks amazing, especially hearing that it's gonna have all types of cool abilities and mm-hmm. um I, I I just love Prince of Persia. I love being able to rewind time. Yeah, it, it looks so good to me. Yeah, this this isn't exactly the way I would have chosen it to return, but with like all these other games the way they are now, I don't know that it coming back the way it was would fit in anymore. So this, I mean, it's, it's perfect for me, dude. Yep. It looks cool. Go with the new Armored Core game. I think it's looking <sighs> really, really good, you know? I totally forgot about that. I, want, it's, I wonder if it's one of those things where it's going to come out and people are going to be disappointed because it's not Dark Souls with mechs. Eh, I won't did listen you, to those people. Did you watch the Miyazaki interview about the gameplay and stuff? No. Where they said it's it's basically going to be like classic Armored Core, how you can like customize the mission structure and stuff. It's going to be very similar, but they're they said they're adding everything that they learned from making all the Souls games and stuff to make things more challenging. So it, it will appeal in some ways to like FromSoft fans, but yeah, dude, I'm I'm really amped for that game. It looks mm-hmm. awesome. Let me some mechs. Yeah, the first game I picked was Mortal Kombat 1. Yeah. Because, like, I played almost all of them up until the reboot on 360 so and PS3. What, <clears throat> yeah. And then I didn't play 10 or 11, so I didn't know really what was going on with the story, but apparently they're kind of soft rebooting the whole timeline. So I'm like, re- and I've watched a lot of the gameplay and stuff, and it just looks super, super solid. So me and my son usually play a lot of Mortal Kombat together when they come out. Yeah, he gets pretty into it. 
All right, well, you uh, already talked about my second game that I was going to talk about, which was Mortal Kombat 1. So oh, yeah. I'll just go ahead and jump to my third one, <laughs> which was the new stuff that they're going to be coming out for Flight Simulator. Yes. Mm-hmm. It actually did look cool. I, yeah. I love that they added jobs to it, you know? Mm-hmm. That seems like really fucking cool. Like search and like, rescue type stuff. Yeah, the search and, and rescue stuff sounds really mm-hmm. awesome. Uh yeah, it just all of it just looks really freaking dope. Not right. to mention the whole Dune aspect. Yes, yeah, I want to find out. I gotta find out what that Dune stuff is, man. That, that makes sweet. me think they're just gonna crack this shit open over the next few years, dude. To just throw all sorts of stuff in there. Like, I hope there's a sandworm <laughs> moment in it. It looks like it looks like at some point you're gonna trying to go in for a search and rescue to get those guys out before the sandworm comes. I want to see the sandworm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cal. Um, my next one, I'm just kind of choosing ones that I think you guys won't choose. Um, I thought Clockwork Revolution. Hell yeah. Looked fucking fantastic. That was my number two, actually. Oh, damn it. But, uh, <laughs> it, it looked like a Bioshock type game, like a Steam cum, Steam, Steam cum. Steam cum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a steampunk type game, like Bioshock type game. Steve yeah. game, but at the same time, there's time travel in it. Yeah, and I was digging on it pretty hard, seeing all the Bioshock stuff and the Steam come, and then <laughs> when they started showing off the time travel, I was like, "Oh, I'm sold!" Mm-hmm. Like that was some of my favorite stuff of like Titanfall two and you know Prince of Persia and just all, I love time travel. Uh, Dishonored mechanic. two had some of that stuff. Dishonored in there. two, yeah. yes, yes, dude, and uh, Time Splitters, you know, just. Mm-hmm. All those types of time travel games, I'm I'm just way into. Back, I mean, Back to the Future is my favorite movie series of all time. So like, time travel is just in my science fiction. It's in your blood. Blood. Yeah, that looks sick. Not gonna lie, all I could think about while you were talking was the nightmare of being surrounded by steam cum. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like a nightmare. It's, it's, it's cum in a different form of matter. <laughs> I just imagine like a small, tiny crate, like breaking a pipe that's just flowing out semen. You know? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right, and it's like hydraulic pressure. So if you try to plug the hole, it's just going to get into your pores, and it's going to blow your hand up like a balloon. A balloon, a hand balloon full of cum. <laughs> <laughs> we call that a cum bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's got to release it, Jackson. Yeah. Who's going to release it? Is it your mom? <laughs> <laughs> someone's got to. <laughs> Mom, release my steam cum hand. Oh man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, so let's go with uh, Immortals of Avium. Mm. Really? Because I think it actually does look pretty good, you know? Yeah, it does. As That's not like Destiny like magic game, right? Pretty much, kind of. It's like a magic shooter. Yeah. But like Call of Duty from what I hear. Oh, okay. But with dragons. It's and got it's, it's like a single player game that's got like a twenty something hour campaign to it, so really? I think I think it's got potential. And yeah, you from what like, I've seen, it looks cool. Yeah, like equip and unequip different types of things that change the spells on each hand, and they have like different. The reason I said it's like Destiny is they have like different levels of rarity and stuff like that. Oh but really? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The game does look sick. Uh, I know you probably have this on your list, Kyle, but Avatar. Frontiers of Pandora. Did not have that on my list. Really? I was not impressed. Oh my god, bro. I wanted that game to be third person. I want to be... I wanna I'm, a, I'm a little upset that it's not, but like it... I Like I love Far Cry 3. I was about to say it looks like Far Cry, but with... Yeah, Avatar. and since then, the, the same formula so many times with Assassin's Creed and Ghost Recon and all this shit has gotten so old, but I feel like it fits in so perfectly... In like Avatar and like on Pandora, and I'm just excited because, like, you get to go to different areas and meet different tribes, and you get to see all the different flora and fauna from these different areas that we haven't explored yet, dude. It looks so good. I'm super hot. Can't (laughs) wait. Yeah, (laughs) it does look really good. I'll probably play it. Yeah, yeah, I do like Ubisoft games. As repetitive as I can get. Yeah. All right. uh, Well. Fuck it, that's Starfield. It fucking just looks good. It does look good. Why are you yeah. saying fuck it? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Starfield <laughs> looks really good. Because there's a whole are you an X bot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's like a whole showcase on it and stuff like that. But the showcase is what really sold me on Hell the game. Yeah. So same here. 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. It like you see I how they, really they built that like that's that that mech <laughs> spaceship. <Yeah. dude. laughs> what, was, um, what was that other game that is like all set up in space, but it's basically like Fallout in space? You're talking about No Man's Sky. You're talking about S- oh, Star Outer Citizen? Worlds. <laughs> Outer Worlds. Huh? Outer Worlds. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like. So, so far, it looks a lot better than that. I couldn't really get into Outer Worlds that much. I beat Outer Worlds and not a fan. I hope Av- Outer Worlds 2 is good, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Starfield looks so awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for Starfield. That's probably up there for me, too. I was stoked to hear that you're going to be able to, A, build your own ship, and B, have a crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite. A crew that you want. like Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not my favorite part of Mass Effect is just having the crew and being able to talk to those people and stuff. Yeah, it's gonna. It's like gonna be the first step to uh, getting towards uh, like the VR thing that they have in that one episode of uh, Black Mirror. Oh, the Star you know Star Trek looking one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that episode was so good. Yeah, I just hope Starfield runs good on PC. That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping for too. I'm definitely gonna have to upgrade before I play that game. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Also, I hope there's really good mod support on PC because I want to straight up fly the Starship Enterprise or an X-Wing or something. Bro, there's people that are going to make like Mustafar and stuff, like whole planets, bro. Exactly. I, I hope the modding support is good on him. Because, I mean, Bethesda game always have modding. Bethesda game have mod. They have <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Solomon Grundy want pants too. My turn? Yes. Okay, I'm going to say avowed. Yeah. I thought that little bit that they showed looked really good. Actually, I got skipped, but yeah, Avowed, yeah. Yeah, I was actually more excited about Avowed before I saw the gameplay. Kind of. I don't know, like... I thought the <sighs> the monsters seemed to have good variety that you would want out of, like, a fantasy. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know about the combat quite yet, but from I, what I saw, it looks like a good fantasy. I was stoked about Avowed off that trailer until I heard more behind-the-scenes stuff about it. And it's not going to be fully open world. It's going to be open world pockets. I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to be like Outer Worlds, I think. Like they made yeah. Outer Worlds. Yeah. It was the last game they made and it was very kind but of it, open world linear. It did look good. There was just tons and tons of Draugr or whatever the hell they are, you know, from Skyrim. Yeah. It, was, it seemed like they're everywhere. I just thought the, the playable character like looked lackluster. And I'm like, I assume you're going to be able to equip different stuff and you're not just going to look like a nomad the whole time. But Right. I don't know. I heard it's not going to be nearly as big as like a Skyrim or any type of Elder Scrolls, which gives me hope that maybe the story is refined to the point where it is a really good story, hopefully. so. And they usually do good story. Right. Mm-hmm. So hopefully the gameplay is cl- close to as good as the story is, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, I got skipped. So my next one was the Crew Motor Fest. Because mm-hmm. everything I've heard about that game since uh, Summer Game Fest... Is that it is pretty much Forza Horizon, but for PlayStation. Oh, sick. Yeah, and it all takes place on Hawaii, and it's supposed to be pretty big, pretty expansive, and it sounds pretty badass. Like I'd like another Forza-type game. Hell yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun to drive Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. My next one was Assassin's Creed Mirage. Really? Yeah, that game looks good, man. Yeah, here's yeah. the thing, man. I love 1, 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations. Like, Did you ever play Syndicate? Yeah. No. Uh, I, I kind of got burned out, so I just... I, I did play 4, but I was like... Mm. You know. I, I loved Black Flag. I wish I would have yeah. finished Black Flag, per se. But if you ever get a chance, man, play <laughs> Syndicate. It, it's like the last one of those. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool, and I like the Jack the Ripper DLC. I really want to get a hold of that. It's it's a good game. Like I loved but it. The fact that it's like a return to form with modern day graphics, and they have that new Mirage like chain assassination mechanic. It looks so cool. I was telling Jackson we were watching the Ubisoft thing. Um, what I loved about the old Assassin's Creed games was that you'd the part of the fun was sneaking up to that target. Mm-hmm. Get in that kill and then making a break for it. And it that being was, a one hit kill too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Being having to run your ass off for sometimes five to ten minutes, like you just can't mm-hmm. get away. And like you're taking everything you got to get away. That yeah. was my favorite parts of those yeah. games. Trying to find a haystack. Sometimes it or felt like you did like three circles around the city trying to get out of there. Right. <laughs> and, and then you'd slowly figure out the intricacies of that city. Yeah. And you'd be, okay, I know I'm going to take this path to get to here and here and here. Yeah. Yeah, those first couple were so good, man. You see they're adding in like a filter to where you can make it 
blue like the first Assassin's Creed. Really? I'll yeah. be using oh, it. Oh, that's sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, the first one was so blue. Like, yeah, it, had that it really blue was. Blue filter, yeah. A lot like the Matrix with that green filter. Yeah, they said they worked really hard on the lighting. Like, they worked with people who were raised in Baghdad and stuff to make sure that the lighting looked accurate and stuff. Cool. So, yeah. I, I really am stoked for that because I'm a huge AC fan. Yeah. And I've not been liking I mean, I beat Origin. Origin was fucking rad, but I did not like Odyssey and I did not like uh, Ragnarok. I yeah. own both of those, but I just couldn't really get into them. They're just too big, man. Yep. I don't have the time for I haven't for played them. <laughs> I do want to play Origins though. I, di- I didn't get around Origins to it, was but. small enough, but with the same system, but small enough to where it was just fantastic. Yeah. I love Egypt. The sand, sand looks so good. It, it, <laughs> that sand though. <laughs> there was one mission. I saw, I'll never stop thinking about it. But I was going through the desert, and then all of a sudden, I see a mirage of myself walking in front of me, and then oh, it just cool. disappears. And I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> and I, I never could explain it the whole rest of the game. I was like, "What the." fuck happened in this desert dude i saw a mirage of myself right in front of me it was like what the fuck that's cool desert playing tricks on you yeah <laughs> on the mind <laughs> <laughs> and uh like my last one i was gonna talk about because he talked about bull combat one already uh i was actually kind of stoked for the dlc they're gonna be adding to uh riders republic for skateboarding yeah hmm I'm I'm a sucker for skateboarding games, man. Like no matter what it is, I will at least try it out. Yeah. Yeah. You sign up for the open beta or whatever, the public or the closed beta or whatever. For skate? No, for the Riders Republic DLC. Uh no, I didn't know that was like <laughs> yeah, I've already got the game. Up. I didn't know like the DLC was an open beta thing. I just hope that because of the BMX update for it wasn't too super expansive. I hopefully they add enough controls to it to make it actually a good skateboarding game and not, like, kind of basic, like, not a lot of tricks in it. Yeah, the thing was, like, whenever they made that BMX DLC for it, they really kind of, like, screwed you by, like, giving you, like, the worst bike that... Mm. So you can't do, you can't hit the ramps and the gaps that you really want to hit, and they put everything else behind a paywall. So yeah. it's like it's like, hey, buy the DLC that unlocks the career for you to be able to unlock more stuff. And I have a feeling that might be what they're gonna do with this. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I might do it just because it's skateboarding. You'll do it. You'll probably buy it. You're probably right. And then you'll probably get the edge and you'll be like, oh fuck, I'll buy the BMX shit too. You're probably right. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> That's how they get you. Because I Constantly think about Matt Hoffman's Pro Skater and the BMX stuff you can do on American Wasteland. Yep. So I was like, man, I would love to do that again. Um, yeah. My next game was Alan Wake 2. Mm. Dude, Control was so good. Mm-hmm. And Top notch. What was, was it called? It wasn't called Alan Wake 2, was it? It was called something else? Yeah. What are you talking actually, about? Well, I'm confused now. You was mean it control? actually called Alan Wake? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Alan Wake 1, I, I I saw a lot of gameplay for it and never wanted to play it. It didn't look fun to me. Mm-hmm. But this new one, they're, they're calling it their first survival horror game. So it it looks pretty baller, dude. Especially yeah. from all the, all the stuff I've heard after Summer Games Fest of all the people that actually played it. It sounds so cool. Um, it sounds like a game that you're going to want to play, Jackson. It sounds like it's going to be like a kind of a cult kind of horror game. Yeah. Um, it sounds like Alan Wake is basically narrating and writing what is happening to this FBI agent. Her name is Saga. And you're going to be finding like transcripts from him of like Saga went over here and did this thing. And then it happens in the game and stuff and kind of freaking her out a little bit. But it sounds pretty badass, man. It sounds pretty dark. And with how good control was, I can only imagine how good this one's going to be. And they're trying to con- they're trying to like mix together all their worlds, you know, like Max Payne, Control. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're all they're all together, they're all related somehow, mm-hmm. and connected. It, yeah, and <laughs> we're all connected. <laughs> we are all connected. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that I think that looks good because I, I I don't think we're gonna have to play it Alan Wake one to be able to enjoy this. Yeah, I don't think so either. Then I'm gonna. I'm going to play the shit out of it because Control was so fucking good, man. God. 
I still need to play it, dude. Control it's was so, so good. Fucking good. It's 10 out of 10. It was my favorite Star Wars game of that year. Like, <laughs> it was so fucking good, man. God. It was so creepy and so, like, just, like... Yeah. But the powers were so fun and flying around. Yeah. It was just so, like... What was crazy is, like... About like three months before I played it, I just got super into SCP stuff, and mm. like when I started playing that game, I was like, "This is what I wanted in a game." <laughs> it's like it's giving me everything I wanted. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> uh, for me, number two, Fable. Yes, it seemed like it was running in game like some of that mm-hmm. stuff it didn't seem like it was just pre-rendered cutscenes or anything so yeah to me it you know looks like it's on track to be a good game hopefully fingers crossed i'm just i'm just trusting playground dude yeah. they've never disappointed me before and I, I like how they're making it to where the hero is someone that it looks like someone that that the rest of the world is tolerating Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like she fires a fireball, and this guy's like, "Oh yeah!" Like whatever the fuck he said to her. Like, or she like kicks the chicken, and he's like, "Okay, I guess," or something like. He's like, "Nice yeah. hit, I guess." Or something. Like it seems like the public is like, "Okay, this guy thinks he's a badass, but he's really not." You yeah, know what I'm saying like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that British humor seems yeah. to be c- coming through pretty well. And yeah, you know, as someone who loved fable one and two and liked fable three mm-hmm. like I, I i hopefully it's good and i love all the forza horizon games yeah they've mm-hmm. never done me wrong and they're a british studio so they're right exactly yeah. Yeah. uh the only thing i thought was weird about the trailer was how like he was narrating right and then it's he's like oh i'm a giant and she's in my house and it's it became like almost like a uh little nightmares side scrolling platforming thing where you're trying to get away from him and mm-hmm. i was like Okay, is that supposed to be an indicator of what the game is going to be like? Because like there's a, no way they would do that. Or like, like a, in Batman, like the Scarecrow areas yeah, where I'm he's like, like all big I and you're like... I could see that, yeah. <laughs> but I was like troubled at first. I'm like, I don't really know what they're trying to tell me about the game, you know? Right. And I wonder if it seems like they're leaning more into fables. Right. Yeah, that'd be cool. I could see that for sure. Like a, you know, like Jack of the Beanstalk and like yeah. Little Red Riding Hood and like Brothers Grimm. That would type, be sick, actually. Brothers yeah. Grimm type fables. Yeah, I'm looking cool. forward to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I still think about this to this day. Being at your house as Aaron showed up with that first Xbox and watching him turn it on and then mm-hmm. seeing the opening, like the opening screens of the Microsoft logo and the... um. Lionhead, Lionhead yeah. logo, and the just, guy walk up and like stab the sword in the ground, yes, and yeah. then watching yeah. Aaron play Fable for the next yeah. three, four hours, just and then having to sneak to his duplex to play more Fable when my mom wasn't looking because <laughs> she didn't let us play it. <laughs> man, I, some it's good shit. Some of the my favorite memories, man. Really, yeah. uh, my next one was Marathon from Bungie. Really, yeah. Like honestly, not because I, I don't know. Like I'm. I say I'm not really into multiplayer shooters. I am. <laughs> uh, but, like, I, I wish it had a story. But at the same time, Bungie, like, if they came out with Destiny and they were like, it's just multiplayer, it's just, what, what do they call the Crucible, whatever? Yeah. I would still play it because it's so good. Like, and so I'm, I'm, I don't know. And, like, the fact that they already have a universe established from, like, the 90s when they made the PC games back then. Like, and the art and everything looks so cool. Oh, yeah. Like, the really colors cool. and the contrasts and the big floating spaceship outside the planet. Like, yes. Yeah. And the robots. Yeah, I'm excited for it. And I love Bungie. So, right. I'll go ahead and throw another one on there uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Mm hmm. That was the next one on my list. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I figured that was probably on all of our lists. And if it's not, it should have been. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's cool to me is that. I need to see more. Take her out. Put Han Solo in there, you have a Han Solo game. That's what that's what they're doing. It's a Han Solo game. That robot is your Chewbacca. That little thing is yeah. is your whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. your Millennium Falcon. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I hope it. I hope it's what it is. I hope it's a scoundrel game. You know. Yeah. It just, it just looks so dope. It did. It almost looked too good to be true. That's what I thought too. I like that uh, she did, she she made a choice and it was wanted posters everywhere. It's like, yeah, dude. And the guy's like, <laughs> if this is your last job and then and then you're good, nobody's ever gonna come after you again. And you know the stakes are high when you hear something like that. 
Like, you do this and you're done. And that's how you make a character. Like, I wonder if it's like cyberpunk where it's like you have to do that one mission where that guy ends up screwing you over and Jackie dies. And it's like you have to do that. I wonder if, if, if it's it, like that. It's probably yeah. going to start out the game. So, yeah. What's that guy's name in cyberpunk? Is it Dexter Deshaun? Yeah. Yeah. The guy that looked like Mark Henry from wrestling. Yeah, you yeah. guess as good as mine. <laughs> yeah, we got no idea. Sexual chocolate, man. Mark Henry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure, that sounds like Dexter <laughs> Deshaun. World's strongest man. <laughs> okay, you lost me again. Um, my next one was motherfucking Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh yes, my one. yeah, dude. dude. When I saw that, I was just like, "You kidding me, dude? This looks so fucking yeah, good, bro." Especially like my favorite character in Final Fantasy is fucking Red Thirteen, mm-hmm. and seeing all the Red Thirteen shit. Well, I mean Vincent too, but like Red Thirteen shit. I'm like, yeah. fuck yes, you dude. see Guggenheim like in yes. the planets, yeah, yeah bro. Because <laughs> oh. he's such a douche. He's such a dweeb character in the real yeah. in the actual game, but like it looks badass. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Yes, dude. Mm-hmm. Getting that granular, granular to something that I've loved since mm-hmm. I was a kid, like cloud in a cloak saying reunion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to me. I can't tell you how many times that last three or four years, me and Connor will randomly text each other like rebirth, reunion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm so excited. I still got to finish um, intermission. But yeah, I got to finish that too. I, yeah, I still haven't even started. I mean, it. Yuffie's my favorite character from from the classic so i gotta finish it maybe we need to do a little game club for that and beat it real quick and see how we all thought about it yeah here it's pretty short so right looks good give Mm -hmm. me more sephiroth i love sephiroth like Mm -hmm. Sephiroth. oh they give you the whole flashback scene with tifa and him in the in the cloning facility oh yeah Mm -hmm. anyway you guys think uh the timelines will merge somehow where zach is gonna show up and be alive. I have no idea what they're gonna do. Yeah, like I was so confused towards the end of that first game that I'm like, and part of it let me down a little bit because I was like, I don't know what the fuck's happening, and I'm like, I'm so confused yeah. that I'm like, right. what the fuck? Yeah, but st- I still loved it. You know, I yeah. can't remember what score I gave it at the time. I think I gave it a seven or an eight or something like yeah. that. But I'll keep playing them. <laughs> yeah. it's If it has Final Fantasy in the name, I'll yep. probably play it unless it's Stranger of Paradise. Yep. Chaos? Chaos. I'm not chaos. into chaos. <laughs> oh, are you are you done? Yeah, that was my number one. I, yeah. I had a one in my back pocket just in case we went over, but uh, and I'm tied between Dragon's Dogma, which looks great. It does look good. And Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, just because it looks like a really high-budget, good JRPG like classic style JRPG that I've been dying for lately. I am curious about that because that uh that world seems pretty uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, either that or that metaphor game that was just at the Xbox showcase from the Persona developers. <laughs> yeah. That game looks sick. That too. looks weird. That <laughs> they're. Their menu styling is like, dude, you guys just crib, you're cribbing <laughs> yeah. off of Persona Five. <laughs> yeah, like everybody knows you like it so much, you know. Yep. But it's cool looking. And my last one that I had as an honorable mention is Cyberpunk Fan Liberty. Mm. That shit looks so good. And hearing all this, hearing about what they're doing to the game when that actually launches makes me want to replay the whole game, start from scratch. Especially because they said that your choices that you make in Phantom Liberty are going to actually affect the ending of the real game. And you can have different oh, endings, cool. stuff like that. Mm hmm. Which a lot of people say that the ending of the real game was not the best. <laughs> yeah. So hearing that they're they're actually working on changing stuff, since like they're also working on changing the skill system and leveling up system, and the police system, and the yeah, they're changing a lot of stuff, and it and it sounds really good. I'm trying so hard to get around to The Witcher Three and Cyberpunk, but like with I just seeing all the stuff that was announced and then release date, release date, release date, release date, all this fall, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> There so will like, be a gap eventually. Yeah. So yeah. let's transition <clears throat> transition into that. What are you guys looking forward to the most coming up for the next six months of the year? Um, I'm really looking forward to Forza Motorsport because okay. I'm, I'm like I'm really into racing, and if it's on real tracks, I'm into more. I'm into it more for some reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
not a game, but I'm really looking forward to uh, that quarterback series that Netflix is going to put out. Did you guys see the trailer for that? Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty good. It looks really good. I mean, it showcases my man Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes yeah. You know, but I feel like they did a good job of, like, picking the quarterbacks to follow. Like, you got, like, one from, like, a mid-tier team and then one team that didn't do really good, then the Super Bowl champ. So, mm-hmm. One thing for me that I'm really excited for is Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, yeah. yeah. I already bought it. I'm ready for it. I can't wait to play that, man. Yeah, I cannot wait to play it. It's going to be good. I always have that itch to want... I I keep seeing Divinity on my computer screen because <laughs> I have it downloaded. <laughs> I re-downloaded it like two days ago on it's, my Steam Deck. It's the Divinity developers, right? You're yeah. Doing, okay. uh, yeah. What's it? Yeah, Larry, Larian Studios? Yeah. Yeah. Think you could uh, build a PC and play it with us, David. A four-man uh, yeah. campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the time you have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like in a row... I would say Final Fantasy 16 mm-hmm. and then Baldur's Gate 3, um, Armored Core, uh, the new Spider Man, and then, uh, God, there's another one coming out after Spider Man, right? Starfield. Starfield, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to play Alan Wake 2, but uh, yeah, Starfield would probably be the last big one. And then uh, I guess I do want to see The Flash and then. That new Aquaman movie comes out later this year, right? Uh, Blue Beetle does too. Yeah, Blue Beetle. Yeah, yeah, for Blue sure. Because that's like insane, August. Bro. Yeah, you, you pretty stoked for that one, David? Hell yeah! I, yeah. I watch that trailer like once a week, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me also, Final Fantasy sixteen, Armored Core. Um, actually, Liza P. I'm super excited for. I played the demo for that. Loved it. It was really good. Does it really give you the blood war- bloodborne vibe? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, Basically, just in feel though, like the weapon customization is a lot different, but it, it makes the game feel way different. And like, yeah, okay. uh, and then Avatar, December, would be great. Um, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the new TMNT movie, the Seth. Yes, Rogen. yes, yeah. dude. Yeah, that looks good. The new trailer was awesome so, for that. Yeah, and then uh, I've never been interested in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles until now. Yeah. It was weird, man. This month has been crazy because it was like, what, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and then the Beast Wars Transformers movie and then the Flash all just like boom, boom, boom. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you see any of them? Uh, no, we were on vacation when, uh, um, when Spider-Man came out. Uh, Spider-Man came out a week, like a week before we left and then Beast Wars came out. Okay. Does that come out today? I think Flash came out today. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We are going to go see Flash at some point, Mandy and I. But it's going to be a crazy Spider-verse year, man. Was insanely good, man. It yeah. over the top good. It's a must. I'm going to have to take Owen to see that. He's he's all into Miles. I let that kid, dude. Sometimes I'd play I'd play Miles, and then I'd just set the controller down and walk away, and I'd come back in like two hours later, and he's still sitting there like web swinging around town. I'm like, all right, <laughs> he's not in the streets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in a good way. As Spider Man, he's slinging web, yeah. not, not 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 rock. I don't know. He's guarding the streets. <laughs> not selling rocks on him. All right. Yeah, the main thing I'm looking forward to is like Connor said, Final Fantasy, um, Spider Man Two, Baldur's Gate Three. Um, I'm really looking forward to all of those for sure. Mm-hmm. Can't really think of any movies coming out the next Starfield half of the year. Starfield, yeah, um, yeah. That's about it. I, I mean, are there any <clears throat> are there any good movies coming out the rest of the year that you guys can think of? Um, uh, I need to see that Oppenheimer movie, but it already came out. So no, it doesn't come out till July. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, then Oppenheimer. Yeah, Oppenheimer is definitely on my to watch list. I will be in IMAX to watch that one. Then there's the Marvels, right? Does mm-hmm. that come out this year? I think so. I think it's like the last one this year, I think. I'm actually pretty excited for that movie. Uh, one thing that I'm really, really excited for is Mission Impossible 
Dead Reckoning Part mm. One. Yep. Like, Fuck yeah. That's gonna be a good one. It's one of those movies that I, I I'm in the theater for all the Mission Impossible movies and James Bond. Like I, uh, it's spy movies are up there for me as far as like realism type movies. You know. Yeah. I can't wait to see more from IO Interactive about their James Bond game they're making. Yeah. It's gonna be sweet. Oh, Dune Part Two is later this year. Mm. Is it th- later this year? I'm pretty sure, right? Is it like December or something? Yeah, you're right. It is December, dude. That's gonna be that might be movie yeah, of the year, this is man. November third, right here, I think. November third. Uh, mm-hmm. It's gonna be really hard to beat across the Spider Verse. It's gonna be Mar- really hard. Do you know how Dune ends? Well, you haven't seen Evil Dead Right. Yeah. <laughs> is it gonna be two parts or three parts? Should only be two. Yeah, Dune. It's gonna be two parts, and then he's gonna he's talking about making the next one is Dune Messiah, which is a little bit further in the future. This might also sound weird, but I am kind of looking forward to that Barbie, Barbie movie. Same. Yeah, dude. it does look good. It looks fucking weird. It, the Will Ferrell part of it is like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Is he playing it's the like same character he played in Lego movie? Might be. You know, Similar outfit. Oh, my way. God, dude. That's that's a weird theory. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought when I saw him playing that character. I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa. He, mm. He's just playing a live action version of of Mr. Business or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, they got a great cast for that movie, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm also looking forward to that uh, ha- di- that new Haunted Mansion movie, just yes. because it's got Owen Wilson in it. Like, yeah, yeah, he's got the chops. Hmm. Um. Another thing that I'm looking forward to is the Equalizer three. Have you guys seen any of the Equalizer movies? Yes, bro. I, I I've love only seen them. The first one. The second one is fucking rad. It is crazy. It's so good, man. I watched it for the first time maybe like a month and a half ago. I, I'd had it for like the last couple of years, but never watched it. And yeah, it was just as good as the first one, if not better. I'll, all yeah. right. It's it's fucking I'll probably rad. watch all of them like in a row. Sure. It's it's really good. Yeah. But yeah, Equalizer 3 comes out in September. And then in September 8th, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. <laughs> nah. Because I've, I've seen the Opa. first two. Oh, you're not seeing that, Jackson? No, oh, man. <laughs> okay. What do you guys think about... Think of some kind of just weeb that goes to the theater to watch My Big Fat Greek a Wedding Day? I don't know. Pretty excited about that new Pixar movie, Elementals. It's good. Yeah. Good reviews. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys think you're going to see Craven the Hunter in October? Probably, yeah. Uh, I might. It will, compl- it will complement the movie nice or the game nicely. It, but yeah, it might work. I don't right. think I've seen the trailer for it. And then uh, October 27th, Saw 10. What do you think about that, Jack? Nah. We actually just did a Saw marathon. I, I really... St- sorry, man. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. I was going to say, I have not really cared for the Saw movies after the second one. Because at that point, I feel like, man, they're really... It's... They're, at, they're just adding 10% more to the story every time you watch a movie... And they just keep recycling, like, it, all right, it you're, you're in a get, trap. How are you going to get out? <laughs> it does get worse every movie, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like Now, August 13th, or no, not August, October 13th, which is a fucking Friday the 13th this year in October. Whoa. We're getting Exorcist Believer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think that's going to be good? But I hope so, man. I really hope so. Because I've been waiting for, like, a reboot of The Exorcist mm. for a while. So, yeah, I'm yeah. excited for that one. Possession movies are always the shit. Dude, we got Evil Dead Rise and Exorcist Believer this year. Evil Dead Rise was so good. And Scream 6. Now, in October or in August 18th, we got Strays. How do you think that's going to be? I'll go see that in theaters with you if you want to go see it. That dog movie with Will Ferrell oh, as the main yeah, dog yeah, and yeah, Jamie yeah. Foxx. Fox. That looks funny. Hopefully, so. it's good, man. We're getting a new Insidious this year, too. Yes. What is it it's called? The Red the Door final or one. something? Red Door, yeah. Something I want to check out later this year, that Rebel Moon movie from Zack Snyder. That comes out this year? It says December 22nd. Nice, dude. And That's... it's supposed to be a really crazy space movie that was supposed to be a Star Wars movie. Oh, right. nice. But got changed into a regular movie because it wouldn't be approved or something. Uh, Zack yeah. Snyder's always getting the shaft, isn't he? Yeah. I forget the name of the movie, but I kind of want to see that new Jennifer Lawrence comedy. Yeah, the one that where, just came out. Yeah, where she gets hired to like just like like basically to do the, the parents kids. is like, hey, go be a slut towards my son and try to get him to like you know oh come out of his God. shell a bit. Go date our son. Yeah, quote unquote date him. Yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I like movies where the loser kind of gets the girl. I feel like that's how that movie's going to end. I got mm. a feeling that Jennifer Lawrence is all of a sudden going to fall for him. Like, he's actually a sweetheart. <laughs> You'll be able to live vicariously through him and be yeah. in love with Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think? Are you saying I'm a good guy? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Jackson, last week we, on the podcast, we talked about things that, or I think it was last week, we talked about things that we should be worried about for the rest of the year, you know, going forward in life. Uh Uh-huh. Is there anything that you can think of right now that we should be happy about? Anything we should be looking forward to not media-related? Um, what you should be looking forward to be happy about? Um, uh, Garth Brooks only has maybe a few... More years to live, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, so you're saying uh, he's a murderer? Right? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to think of something funny off the top of my head. I can't think of it's like the country music seems to be dying out. That's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But, I don't think it's ever close to dying out, dude. Uh, it will. It will one these days. It'll get, it'll get replaced by trap. <laughs> I don't know if that's much better. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's some trap I actually dig. Yeah, no, me too. But Can you guys think of anything else that you should be uh, just overly stoked for coming up in life? I mean, I can hold on to hope that we get two decent human beings running for president this year. <laughs> it's not going to happen in but our lifetime. It probably won't happen. You're right. We yeah. will always get a choice between, the, like, to quote South Park, between yeah. a turd sandwich and a douche, like, and a douche bag, a giant just, douche or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's the middle of summer, man. What else is there to be stoked for? Just go outside, have fun, right? Right. We're going to we're going to Comic Con in Tulsa in August, and I get to meet Nolan North. Oh, nice. cool! I'm over the moon for that. Yeah, I actually did meet an artist. Have you ever read the Last Ronin, the TMNT comic? Uh-uh. Oh I've heard God, about it and bro. I've seen some stuff on it, but I haven't. I'll read. let you guys borrow that. Um, They're making I, a game about that. Are they really? Yeah, pretty oh, sure dude, it's so game. sad, man. But anyway, uh, I had one of the guys that did the artwork for the cover art um, sign my book. Well, he didn't sign my book because he didn't do the the cover art for the specific issue that I bought. He signed your tits instead. But he signed, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> signed my butt crack. No, he did sign a. Um, uh, a large print of the cover art that he that he worked on, so yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, cool. And I almost went and met Kevin Eastman in Kansas City, but I didn't have the money for it. And I would have had him sign it, but yeah, Nolan North in August. That should be sweet. Are you gonna have him do one of his voices? Maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> do a Deadpool line, a really dirty Deadpool line. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so we go ahead and just move into yo dude now. You know we can we can go ahead and do that a little bit. You know, I don't know what else we're gonna yo talk dude. about. Hey, yo, what's up? Check this out. Yo dude. Those background vocals. That's me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, dude, check this out. iPad OS 17 lets you connect your iPad as a screen for Nintendo Switch. So, <laughs> uh, check it out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that real? Yeah, that's real. That's sick. And you can also use your earbuds or whatever they're called. But, uh, yo, dude, check this out. Archeolo- archaeologists find a 3,000-year-old sword so well-preserved it's still gleaming. It's Valyrian steel, dude. Yeah. It's, it's a extremely well-preserved. So, uh, if you want to check it out. It's like a Bronze Age sword. It's really cool. Right on. It looks like Sting. Uh, nice. yo, yo, dude, check this out. Uh, they discovered a mass grave near a church in Poland with nearly 450 bodies in it um, from the 1840s, and a lot of them, uh, they were severed at the neck and their heads were tucked between their legs, which I guess was how they buried people that they thought were vampires back then. So they figured out that in this specific village there was like a vampire panic in the 1840s. They said like over 50 bodies were buried like this in that mass grave. So like they Damn. were freaking out. And the way they they apparently were able to tell is like say your grandma passed away and then you got like deathly ill 
soon after she passed away, they would think, oh, she must have been a vampire, and they would dig the body up and cut the head off and put it between the legs and rebury <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Some you gotta do what you gotta do to protect yourself against vampires. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When garlic's just not enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sometimes holy water isn't there. Why is it always Eastern Europe, though? You know, that's what I just. So why didn't there were they, no vampires anywhere else. Why didn't they burn the body? I don't get that. Yeah. Um. Yo, dude, check this out. So more Friday the Thirteenth type information. Um, there will be two Friday the Thirteenth in twenty twenty three. The other being in October, as I just mentioned. Um. The last one was in May 2022. That was the only one in 2022. There will be three in 2026, which is the maximum possible for one year. Nice. Um, a year can't have no Friday the 13th. Hmm. Um, people still don't know why Friday the 13th is so unlucky. Um, there's no clear history of it. Um there, a lot of people think it's because of Knights, the Knights Templar. Um, they had a couple pretty well-known burning at the stakes on Friday the 13th. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I found. And I was got all that because of um, that show I was talking about, Mrs. Davis. At the very beginning, they show some Knights Templar stuff. And it just so happened at the bottom, it said Friday the 13th, yada, yada, what year, every year. Mm-hmm. And that spurred me to think, okay, what the fuck? Yeah. Where'd this come from? You're all about Friday the 13th, this podcast. Yeah, we better man. get three so. Jason movies in 2026. <laughs> <laughs> Jason versus Freddy 2. Jason versus Saw. Jason, Jason versus Jason. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Jason X comes back <laughs> to fight the old Jason. <laughs> all right, yo, dude, check this out. So, uh. We got the ligers, right? The tiger and the lion mixes. Uh-huh. Well, guess what? Now we're getting pizzly bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pizzly bears are the offspring of a female polar bear and a male brown bear. And as of right now, oh there God. are eight confirmed hybrids that are in the wild. Thank you. Why would they call them growler bears or something? Hell like, yeah. Pit, like... <laughs> Anyway. What's wrong with pizzly bears? Because uh, it sounds like pissly bears. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But, uh, How are you today? You're looking mighty pissly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess hey, they look kind of, they look pretty freaking majestic, man. They look kind of like, they're like half oh, white, yeah. half brown. Okay. Oh, wow. So majestic. Yeah, they're biggest. They're big old bears, you know? Oh, they're yeah. big old bear. Big old like, pissly uh, bear. Imagine like a, what a polar bear would look like <laughs> if it always had food. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> And was on steroids. I can imagine it right now. <laughs> That's a girthy bear. I want a bear as a pet. Just keep it a miniature the whole time. Yeah. Oh, dude! Before the red panda. Before we end the podcast, I finally finished a uh, chimp empire, mm-hmm. and <laughs> dude, it was a good watch, man. But it broke my heart at the end because the entire time I was rooting for the alpha male Jackson. In there because I, I immediately got attached to him because uh, we share the same name, you know. Mm-hmm. But at one point, there's like there's a big, huge group fight that happens, and yeah, Jackson just gets fucking messed up, and he's like starts going back to his group because like the fight ends up breaking up, and so he's like, "All right, time to retreat," and he he's hobbling back. He can't use one arm, <laughs> and I'm like, "Damn, dude, this ain't, this doesn't look good for him." He where, still- was, where was his bodyguard, dude? Well, th- they were all fighting. Oh. <laughs> it was one massive brawl. Mm. It's like, you, you, ever see, uh, the wall, you ever see the wall of death at a suicide silence concert? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. It's like, it was like this with chimps. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> they all lined up on, they lined up on their jungle side. That's like. exactly how it was, dude. They literally line up in a row and they all just stare at each other until oh, like, shit. until Somebody they start loading their muskets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they just wait for, as soon as one of them starts charging, all of them just collapse in on each other, and then it just becomes a freaking brawl. Dang. And uh, as he's, like, going back to his group, um, he's still the alpha male, and they still accept him as the alpha male, but because he's the alpha male, he can't ever show weakness, so he just goes off into the woods by himself to be alone, and he's going out there to see if, like, he could try to get better at some point, but he doesn't. He just gets worse and worse and worse, and he's like, on his last day, he's basically 
almost like near death. He's dying for the most part. And all of a sudden, his rival or whatever from the same group comes up and just holds his hand and like spends his like last moments with them. And I started crying, dude. I started this- crying like a little pussy. <laughs> Is this but, how you see yourself dying, Jackson? Get in a massive, get in a wall of death, wall? <laughs> and then you exile yourself in society. <laughs> I'll hold your hand, Jack. Uh, All right. I'll hold your hand. Have you guys seen that movie? Nope. Yes. 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 That chimp part, and oh my god, bro, it's pretty brutal. Watching that in theaters, man, I was just like, I kind of want to leave right now. Like, ugh. Yeah, it was gnarly. It's chimps, man. Was his name Jackson too? <laughs> it you might have been. It, it might have been. He got <laughs> shot. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jackson's always getting a fucking bad rap around you, man. <laughs> sure do. That Jackson's no good. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. Well, uh, David, thanks for being on the podcast again. Good yeah. to be here. That has been episode 91 of Crashing with Friends. 91. Yes, it is. Well, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week, and we'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Bye. Crashing with friends. Podcast.